Good afternoon, it's internet this is the rules lawyer from diary of a lincoln geek welcoming you to one of our latest board game reviews exactly i'm mr chris and i will be joining the rules lawyer georgie oh uh for this review uh which we are in case we are reviewing eclipse yes but not just eclipse it's eclipse second dawn for the galaxy yeah that's right this is the kickstarter funded refresh of the classic 4x game eclipse from Lautapelli. Yeah. Fabulous ge- game that we've both enjoyed playing for ages and yep. I've been eagerly watching for the public release of this game yes. and have put my hard-earned money behind it to yes. present it here today and absolutely fabulous. Exactly, because I put my hard-earned money into the first edition. <laughs> <laughs> so, considering how much you borrowed our copy, um, you were like, I'll get this one. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, like we twisted his arm that much. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, without further ado, uh, shall we kind of crack on? Yes, indeed. So, we mentioned that we've both had copies of this game for quite a long time time and for those that haven't played the original version of Eclipse, uh, Eclipse is a 4x style game so that's expansion, exploitation, extermination and expansion. So you need to build your empire and take over the world to get as many victory points as possible to win. Uh, Each turn you get to do as many actions as your economy can afford so a good Euro style game balancing your economy and world building. So the six main actions, so exploring, so getting your new tiles, making sure the wormholes connect, research, so purchasing research from the shop, upgrades to install the fabulous new ship components from the really well organised design tray. Build, so making your new ships and star bases, or even your orbitals. Move moving your ships from one hex to another and influence a way of placing hex influence on already explored sectors and providing you many much needed colony ships to populate the worlds out there so one of the main co- uh, elements of or strategies for Eclipse has always been combat, taking advantage of your puny neighbours that are no match for your your really aggressive warlike empire. Damn those toasters. <laughs> hey! So, as you can see, this Mechanema player has uh, really gone to town with some really rare ship upgrades from the research and has built some quite formidable craft to take on these new advanced ship blueprints. So he's really wanting to take advantage of some of these new parts and really make his influence seen on the galaxy at this early stage in the game. So he's employing the lovely new soliton cannons which are using these shiny blue dice which do three damage for each hit. And the lovely new dice showing hits instead of sixes and blanks instead of ones so it's dreadnought he wants to uh, make his meatiness shown against this puny little little guardian here resolving combat of course always from the outside in and thanks to his variety of computers he has easily managed to be to destroy this dreadnought in one single salvo So the other main strategy often used in Eclipse is uh, often referred to as turtling. So making sure that you are using your economy to get points by forming lots of research and just owning good sectors. So this is quite often employed by the plant people who are one of Chris's 
favourites. I certainly he's always hated me when I've played them. Yeah, well, I, I like I like this kind of tactic myself. While I'm not all out war, I'll do do a bit of combat, but I do like to kind of build up my resources and then attack. Spring. <laughs> so as you can see with this plant person, they've deliberately placed the, their hexes down so not offer wormholes towards their more warlike mechanema friends on the opposite side of the table. So this turn they're wanting to expand their empire because they need some more economy and so they're placing their hexes down in order to try and get some more. So as you can see they've managed to fi find a nice hex with lots of economy planets on it. So they're flipping their colony ship, to take, they're taking influence and they're placing down an economy Cube, population cube from one of the shiny new player trays. All the, play, the player trays and game trays uh, in this edition have been produced by a collaboration with game trays and they're absolutely fabulous and a much cleaner and simpler way of keeping track of all of your economy throughout this game. Now there's some really good examples there of uh, unique strategies that can be employed by the Makana and of course the planter people. While they're not unique uh, to specific race traits, they can be those kind of tactics are just generally employed throughout the game. Indeed. While of course there are core mechanics related to these, you can actually look at the differences that we refer to regards to the different races in one of our other videos. That's the video where we're talking about the differences between the old and the new character sheets and, and boards. Um, so do check that out. Indeed. I say I, I've loved this game ever since I first played it, and I think they've really improved so many aspects with the new, with the new version. Yeah. It's one of my fav favorite games since the first time I played it, and will continue to hold a soft spot in my collection. And, and I and I totally agree. Um, there's a, there's a couple of little things about this game that kind of always sat with me, um, and they still kind of sit with me in the sense that it is not a straightforward game. No. Um, it, it, you do have to have a degree of board game savvy. Um, it's not something that I would suggest that is good for a newbie, um, unless you've got a lot of patience to teach said newbie. <laughs> yeah. Um, this game can easily take two to three hours with four players. I was going to say, this. it's one of the things which the box well, suggests that it's 25 minutes per player. If you've experienced in the game, you might be able to do that. But in practice, if you, it can take a lot longer. And especially, we all know what a game day is like. You don't focus on just the, playing the game. It, no. it drags on. It is, a, it is a big box and it... It is a big box game, so yes. it is one of those ones that you, you, you have a day with friends, you enjoy it and exactly. you go through it all. You socialise it, you have, you have dips and you have crisps and, and you have a couple of beers while you're playing. Um, so it is a social game and there is no dispute about that. But it's not something you can just quickly take out of the box, even with the new elements, which I do love. Mm. They are great uh, and uh, the improvements are very clear but it's just not something you can do quickly unless you are, like you say, an experienced player. So taking that into mind, um, I still love it. Um, it's got replayability without a doubt because of course oh. a lot of some of the a lot of these games these days, you know, um, particularly ones like uh, Time Stories, um, they don't allow for replayability once you've played them. Yeah, that are so story driven. Yeah. That once you don't know the story, you can't. It, it ruins the atmosphere of it, the game. Exactly. And you don't have that with this. No. This is a everything is randomised at each stage from where yeah. your, t your hex tiles are, which hex tiles you have. Exactly. What research becomes available. Exactly. And this is one of the, the positives about this game. It is replayable. Yes, it, what you might fork out quite a lot for it. Uh, to buy the game off the initial outright, it is definitely worth it because of considering it's one of those games that you'll be playing for years to come. A bit like Battlestar Galactica, it's got lots of replayability, uh, and, and this is favorite, exactly yeah. another classic favorite of ours, which is 
what is so good about this game. So, so, I think you mentioned it there. It, the price point will hurt some people. Yeah. And it, it is a big box game. There are tons of miniatures in this. I, th I th still think it's value for money, but I know that not many people can f choose to fork out more than 100 quid for a, for yeah. a game. Yeah. But I, th I still think it's value for money, but it is at a price point that will hurt some. Exactly. Um, but another, another thing with this game is you can also put your personal stamp on it. Mm. Um, if you enjoy painting and you like to paint miniatures, that are provided with games, then this is going to be a bread and butter thing for you. Okay, definitely. Um, particularly uh, because you know they're they're all very straightforward models to paint. They'll prime up really well, and majority of them you could probably do with a single color, give an ink wash, a bit of a dry brush uh, highlight, and pick out a little bit of detail here and there, and they will look fantastic. Yeah, I'm so even the Lads Police demo of the Terran ships, we've just applied, not even primed or anything else, literally just a wash. They look stunning just start with that. Yeah, yeah. You could probably get away with something like a Null Oil uh, yeah. uh, wash. So if you're familiar with some of the Games Workshop series of paints, um, the, uh, Null Oil is one of them. Vallejo do other suitable alternatives as well. Uh, I would rate the Vallejo paints. I know it's a bit of a tangent here. Some of their matte colours are fantastic, and I can imagine the matte colour would look great on these purely because it's space. Yeah, I was say, I think matte colours just generally work on the, sp the spaceships. They just pop a bit more against those black backgrounds. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I think we've covered quite a lot. Um, I'm certainly happy to give Mark my score. Uh, so I'm, you know, based on the replayability. Yes, okay, it can be a little bit complicated, but it's got that replayability. And on that note, I'm going to be giving this game a five out of six. I say I also rate this game. I am all. I have always been partial to a 4x style game, and I love this game for its complexity, which is something I always like. In a game, as I, I am the rules lawyer, I, I love my complexity. Yeah. The only reason I'm not giving this a six out of six is that price point. Yeah. That it is. It, it is an investment you have to be conscious of making. Yeah. And I am giving it a five out of six as well. Yeah. So that's great score. So well done um, to the designers of this game. You've got a ten out of twelve, which is probably the highest rated board game we have given yet. Yeah. Yeah, so um, do guys remember, uh, we know we do this as a hobby, but we also do it because we love it as well. Um, so do, you know, like, subscribe and follow us on doalg.co.uk. If you're a Twitter or a social media user, you can follow us on those as well. But remember to use that all important hashtag doalg. So I am Chris. I am Giorgio. And thank you for watching.